Happy New Year, everyone! Welcome to Let's Play Mega Man X5. Once again, we are going to be 100%ing the game. I'll get to that in a little bit because the 100% for X5 is a little, little bit different than X4. Quite a lot different. We're going to be starting off playing as Zero. Once again, I'll explain why I'm playing as Zero right now in a moment. The cool thing about X5, though, is that you get to change between characters on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. You're no longer locked in to playing as one character from the get-go. You get to choose when you go to stage select. So, once again, we have the good old mysterious voice. They don't even try to hide his face as a silhouette this time. It's just like, it's clearly Sigma. I hate that they do this, but at the same time, it's so goofy. We have less of an idea of who the person Sigma is talking to then we do then we do sigma <laughs> it's always so fun uh the gist of what they were explaining there if you couldn't keep up with the text scroll sigma infected a space colony eurasia with a virus and sent it on a collision course with earth to end all life or rather he's in the planning stages of doing that we're going to find out a little bit more about that after we finish the intro stage off and he's also going to be scattering a virus around the earth and that's pretty much the sum of the cutscene. Uh, him alluding to those plans. It's not a big spoiler for, like, the end of the game or anything. It's actually... Eh, I guess it's a spoiler for things that are about to happen in... I don't know, three minutes? Also, Sigma himself is a virus, which I don't know if that's been mentioned previously, but... Zero... No. You're, we're not gonna hear that line, but... Uh, if you start the stage off as X... You hear a line from Zero once you reach the end of the stage. X is talking to Zero, and Zero mentions something about, um... You will only be able to send Z Sigma if you feel for his evil energy, his evil energy presence, because he's a virus, and that's how viruses work. <laughs> okay, so before I explain why I'm playing as Zero right now for the intro sequence, because there is a very specific reason for that, First, I want to talk about some other stuff, and that's because the explanation for why I'm play I'm I made this choice becomes really complicated because I have to explain like three different mechanics and subsystems in order for that to make sense. So first of all, I love the Statue of Liberty looking monument back there. Uh, so the kick-ass intro music that you started to hear at the main menu is a remixed version of a tune from X1 called Variable X. It's the tune that plays in the intro stage when Zero is talking to X after Zero rescues him from Vile. It's the one that, before you started to hear the do, 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 those notes. Let's see, is there anything important going on in the dialogue here? No, not really. This is just revealing a little bit of a gameplay mechanic. So if you start off as X, you get to keep the armor from X4 that carries over for the whole game. However, if you start off as X and you get to keep the X4 armor, Zero's buster gets destroyed and you cannot use that for the rest of the game. Holy shit, Zero does way more damage than I remember him doing. This is gonna take no time at all. He's not even gonna get to show off his other two attacks. Yeah, that normally takes like six or seven cycles when I play as X. Man, I always, for I always forget how strong Zero is. So that's what happens if you start off the game as X. You keep his armor, but you don't get access to Zero Z Buster, his version of the X Buster. If you start the game off as Zero, you get to keep that Buster when you play as Zero. However, X's armor, as shown in that cutscene back there, gets destroyed. And this is why I was talking about before. The Eurasia Colony, which is one of the space colonies that was damaged very heavily. Also, already it was kind of ancient and in need of renovation. It was damaged during the Repliforce Wars that, uh, that X4 covered. And it was hijacked by Sigma. It's infected with a virus. Earth is infected with a virus. The Eurasia is crashing into the Earth. And we have 16 hours to stop that. That 16 hours is kind of pivotal to a couple of the subsystems of the game. Again, I'll get into that in just a moment because there's some other cool stuff I want to talk about real quick. And this cutscene is just going to sum up what I've been talking about. We need to find 
four parts in order to power up an Enigma Cannon, which is another super weapon tradition from that started in X4, the super weapon tradition. The Maverick Hunters are going to try to use the Enigma Cannon in order to destroy the Eurasia Colony to stop it from crashing into Earth and ending all life on the planet. So aside from that, though, now that I've summed that little bit of story up, because I don't know how how well you can keep up with the text blurbs, with the text scroll speed. So, X5 is where Inafune's influence really starts to wane on the X series. This was actually intended to be the last game in the Mega Man X series, uh, X5 was, because Inafune... Inafune... <laughs> Inafune wanted it to be finished with X5 because he was starting to lose creative control. Still though, you would think that Inafune losing his influence might dramatically impact the quality of it. I don't think so at all, especially when you have when you have compare it to uh to X4. I'll talk about that in just a minute because I have to do something tedious real quick which involves killing myself over and over in Grizzly Slash's stage. Grizzly Slash's stage, very nice place to kill yourself. Great place to commit suicide, just like Dead Man's Point. Because it's scenic, it's adventurous, you're on the, the... You have this nice scrolling background. Most of all, though, you have access to a death pit right at the beginning of the stage. Again, all in due time, I will explain why I am doing these things. But I'll be right back. Okay, cool. So, you see that counter down there, 10 hours left to collision after I pick the stage, 9 hours left. That's very important, the choice of using zero is very important. But, I was, I think I was in the middle, a couple minutes ago, of explaining... What was I gonna talk about? Damn it. Oh! All the ways in which X5 is way, way better than 4. Uh, for starters, the X5 100% is much more interesting. There is one tedious thing that I had to get out of the way just now, which is just dying over and over again and going back to stage select and re-entering the stage to get the timer to count down a couple hours. Because every time you enter a stage, that timer counts down by one hour. I had to get that down to nine hours for something that I'm planning. Aside from that though, that's that only took a couple minutes. That was a couple minutes of tediousness out of the way. And it's right at the beginning, it's no big deal. It's not nearly as bad as some of the stuff in 4. Even though 4 didn't have you doing anything like that, it's just... What it sets up for the 100%, it's more interesting in my opinion. Hell, I've even warmed up to the art style by 5. And I mean that, like, not only just now, but... When I played 5 on release, and remember, I was disappointed when I first played 4 when that was released when I was young. I was disappointed by the art style then. I, I've i always liked the art style of 5 more than 4, even though it's not a dramatic shift. It's more that they've polished and sanded off the rough edges in 5, and they it, it feels like they found their groove in this one. No. Oh. A hit by missiles. Yeah, it just feels like they they found the direction that they needed to be taking things in in order for this to look not only distinct but nice. There's something about it that's just really visually appealing compared to four. I continue this this four bashing even though even after I finish that playthrough. Yeah, uh, five much better than four. Smooth out a lot of rough edges. X5 is one of the best X games, and I said X6 is X6 is my favorite for the new art style ones. The uh, the PS what was it PS1 or PS2? Uh, that era of X games. Five and six though, five and six are both neck and neck. It's closer than I let on. Colin X6 my favorite of those three. It also features a ton of different endings. Plus, there are no more shitty voice sequences. The voices are also a little bit better for the little bit of times you hear them. Usually they're just like the hit reaction sounds, like the huh, huh. Someone's gonna splice that into something nasty. Um, they know, you don't hear this stupid annoying little like, it's not over yet, or time to get serious, when X or Zero reaches low health in X4. A lot of good stuff. There, there seems to be 
an extreme abundance of text in this one, though. Like, that Doctor... I, I sped through the Doctor Light dialogue as much as humanly possible back there. Like, as quickly as possible. Just because it's... It's more text, but it's less relevant text. Like, it's not telling you anything important. The only thing back there with Dr. Light is him expressing a surprise at finally meeting Zero. That's really it. That was the... I want to say that was the leg part for the Falcon armor. I actually don't remember which part. The thing about the armor upgrades in this game, there are two of them now. And I'll talk about that more in a second, but there are two different armor sets you can collect now. But you can only start using the armor sets once you have completed one of the whole sets. More on that in a minute, though, because we are fighting a pretty neatly designed boss, even though he's a little bit of a pushover. He's kind of like the game's chill penguin. He's, uh, I think he's intended to be the first boss, and he certainly feels like a first boss caliber fight. So Grizz here, uh, Grizzly Slash, was originally supposed to be a pig who would use poison gas, but they decided to ditch that because they were afraid it would be offensive due to the fact that this game was only released in Japan like five years after that sarin gas attack in the Tokyo Metro system. His Japanese name was supposed to be Crescent Grizzly. In English, his name was translated as uh, Grizzly Slash. And he's named after the, the guitarist for Guns N' Roses, and that's not the last time you're going to be hearing me talk about uh, bosses whose English names were inspired by Guns N' Roses members. In fact, all of them were. That's a story for another episode, though. Uh, Aaliyah, shut up. Please stop talking. That's another... That's one of the only real drawbacks about uh, X5 is Aaliyah and her constant shit. She is irritating like Navi was. Dynamo, on the other hand, is really cool. There's a line coming up here I really like. Yeah, there it is. Should we even bother fighting against someone so arrogant? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really funny line for some reason. Should we even bother? Actually, I don't think it would should we even bother. I think it is, should we even fight against someone so arrogant? Like, I don't know what, what they're supposed to be implying there. Yeah, Leah is annoying as hell. She just constantly interrupts you to explain basic, basic things. Like, she introduces new mechanics sometimes, but it's nothing that you wouldn't be able to find out quickly by experimenting and just playing the damn game like you would in every other game. Like, here! Hey, there are ticking time bombs. You need to shoot them or they'll blow up and cause harm to you. This is a revolu- Oh, am I gonna- I didn't think I was gonna get that one in time. This is something else that's new to X, which is rescuable reploids. They don't have a major impact on you, they give you extra lives, they heal you a little bit, um... So, my operational definition for the 100% kind of includes them. Uh, this, like, I should say before I get into that, though. This, like other playthroughs, is gonna be a 100% playthrough. Here's where the definition of 100% for X5 gets a little bit strange, though. You get a choice of parts when you beat a boss, like Grizzly Slash back there. Um... Grizzly Slash back there, because he was level 8, and I'll get into that in a little bit. That goes into a very long spiel that I have to go through. Um... When we killed Grizzly Slash, or destroyed him, beat him, whatever you want to call it, we got a choice between two additional parts, in, in addition to the thing that we need to modify the, the Eurasia Cannon, or not the Eurasia Cannon, the Enigma Cannon. We got to choose between a, uh, a part plus life plus an, another item, or a part plus an energy plus another item. When you beat bosses, you can choose between getting extra life or energy. It's like finding an, a, an, a, heart, a heart capsule or a heart capsule for your energy bar. In addition to the heart capsules you get throughout the game, the normal eight ones. When you beat a boss who is level 8, you can also choose an additional part that goes along with either that life or energy boost. So, since I picked the life one for Grizz, I also got an item called the Shock Buffer, 
where you don't get hit stunned for as long when you don't when, uh, when you take a hit. You when you take damage, you don't get hit stunned for as long. And when I do let's plays, you know I can get really sloppy, so damage is kind of inevitable. So that's why I took that one. Ordinarily, the other the other option you get there is called the hyper dash, which lets you dash longer. It, it, it extends the length of your dash, and it also gives you longer dash jumps, which is much better utility-wise, but for the situation I'm in with the Let's Play, uh, Shock Buffer is probably going to do it for me. Anyway, that's kind, of a side, that's kind of besides the point. You get a choice of those parts when you beat a boss. That's all based on a subsystem involving the bosses being able to level up, wh whether or not you can get those parts, and I'll explain that subsystem later. This is kind of what I've been alluding to the whole time, where I it's a really long explanation. For now, all you need to know is that a level 8 boss gives the life plus an extra item, or weapon plus an extra item. You have 8 bosses with 2 choices each, so you obviously can't get all 16, of those bonus parts in one playthrough. So my operational definition for 100% for X5 is all armor capsules, which includes Gaia and Falcon armor, all sub-tanks, all hearts, the eight bonus parts, which is the max you can get in one playthrough. You would have to do two playthroughs to get all 16 because you have to choose between two for each boss. So, I'll also probably rescue all the Reploids who need help, but that's another can of worms. What I'm not going to be doing is S-ranking everything, or SA, or whatever the ranks are. I think it's actually SA, GA, and PA is the highest rank, but... Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the rankings. I am getting all the Reploids, I think... Plus all the parts and all the other normal stuff with an X playthrough. Now is where I kind of have to concentrate on this boss, because this boss can get really, really scary really quick. Um, I'm legit worried about Skyver. Ah, that's why. Sometimes he seems to hit you with much more force. Standing in the middle of this platform, I've had him uppercut me and send me straight off the edge. And it's... that makes this fight very daunting scares the hell out of me. Okay, I have to make it- Oh, god damn it! Yeah, that's why this fight worries me a lot. S uh, Skyver attacks- a Ooh, I shouldn't be trying to explain anything about this boss while he's doing that. That phase is the scary part, I should say. The rest of the fight is not bad at all. Skyver attacks a little bit like Storm Eagle, which is intentional because the guy who designed Skyver was also making Mega Man Extreme at the time, which is kind of like an X1, X2 mashup for the Game Boy. And he, like all the other bosses in the game, is named for a Guns N' Roses member, Michael High in the Sky Monroe, who I don't... Come to think of it, I actually don't think he was a member of Guns N' Roses at any point in time. They just work together a lot. And his... The correct translation of Skyver's name is actually Spiral Pegasus. There's a story behind why all of the bosses in, in X5 are named after Guns N' Roses members. That's gonna have to wait till next episode, because I'm gonna fight Dynamo here, and then I'm gonna end the episode off, and there's not enough time to explain everything that I want to talk about in this episode. I've, I, like, I've already missed the opportunity to, uh, to explain all these weird subsystems that are going on in the, in the game, like the, uh, the leveling system, the way the parts work, all the, the timer, all of that stuff interconnects in a really cool way, which is why I like the 100% for X5, but it, it's also really complicated, and it makes it difficult to talk about without dedicating large chunks of time to explaining those systems. So I'm going to do that in the next episode, along with tell a really cool story about the game's development and why the bosses are named the way they are in the English version of the game. For now, though, Dynamo is a way cooler boss fight than the first time you fight Colonel. Also, checking around for something. No, I guess... Ah, uh, yeah, I can't change parts yet. 
So when you get extra parts from bosses, the uh, the parts I was just talking about, like the Hyper Dash or the Shock Buffer, which is the one I got from Grizzly, it takes, I believe, two hours after you've beaten the boss for the part you get from that... Ooh, ah. Uh, from that boss to become available. So that's safe. Ooh. I thought somehow I avoided that. Ah, he did two in a row. That's scary. Yeah, he's a much cooler fight than the Colonel. I like this fight quite a bit, even though it's pretty simple. I am regretting taking X over Zero, though. At least for this specific fight, because Zero starts the game with an air dash. He, that carries over from X4, no matter what. He, gets his, he retains his air dash that you get from Jet Stingray in the last game. That's really useful on this fight for someone like me who isn't really good at using the claw grip to hold my charge and dash simultaneously. Air Dash makes dodging uh, his jumping slash attack really easy for me. So I'm bad at holding my charge and dashing at the same time. I mean, I could just dash jump off the wall and hit him with an uncharged shot, but that makes this take forever. Got a couple more hits in him. That's... It, it's... Oh, man, that's a really cool animation. Yeah. Glorious Dynamo dies a glorious death. He's pretty cool in general. He is, he is a good line coming up for X. Let's see, just as I thought, I never let up. You should relax a little. You'll die from the stress. What a cool villain. <laughs> what an awesome-ass villain. Such a fun, goofy little dude. Anyway, though, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. I'm really looking forward to next episode because next episode we can really dig into the meat of the game and the subsystems and the development. Anyway, though, take it easy, everyone.